what's up guys welcome back to my channel it is time to do a recap of 2023 so before i continue if you are new here welcome what the heck is this channel about my life all things my life if you like to see how other people live and the experiences that they go through then this channel is for you okay if you like that kind of content give it a like give it a subscribe comment below share it do what you got to do just hang out with me on this channel if you're not into that kind of content still give it a like and i'll see you next time so <laughs> recap in 2023 i am sitting here with my tea not that i'm gonna be spilling tea and some cornbread these are those corn muffins from um, from Costco, those big ones. So I just like cutting them in, into quarters and toasting them and mm, putting butter on them. So let's talk. All right. Excuse me. I am like in full whatever mode. No bra, no makeup. It is what it is. Oh my god, I got burned the other day and I did not think it was going to leave a scar and it did. Thank you, 2023. Okay, so. 2023. Was it a bad year? Was it a good year? In a nutshell, it was a good year. It really was. A lot occurred. So I'm just kind of going to go through each month as I remember it. But all in all, I feel like it was a good year. It's um, been a year of change, transition, pivoting, shifting, whatever word you want to use. It's been a year where I feel like I'm being tested, but like in a good way. It's been a year of a lot of learning, a lot of adjusting. I don't know. It's a year where I feel like I'm starting to like, like wake up. Like, what do I mean by wake up? I'll tell you a brief little story about why I feel like I haven't been, like, awake. 2019, oh my God, was such a great year. My entrepreneurial spirit was, like, coming out. I was launching these tote bags. I was selling my tote bags like crazy. I had launched my Frugal Mom website. I was blogging on the site. I was selling things on my site. I was selling my debt tracker. I, you know, I was just doing things, you know, like this is cool. And then 2020 hit and it was a really, a really rough year. It started off with my grandmother passing away in January of 2020. My daughter almost passing away in February of 2020. And then the world shut down in March of 2020 so I feel like 2020 got me into such a dark place such a sad place such a broken place and like everything just fell apart for me in 2020 as I'm sure it fell apart for a lot of people because 2020 was a terrible year even though you move on and you move past the challenges i didn't feel like i fully recovered from that i don't know if comment below if you agree or not whatever or what your story is but when you're a parent that experiences i guess either losing a child or going through the trauma of almost losing a child it just does something to you like it rips it rips something out of you and I don't know, I felt like even though my daughter got a clean bill of health and things were like, you know, on the up and up, I just felt like, this hair is like getting on my nerves. I just felt like, I don't know, like something, something was ripped out of me and I just couldn't, I couldn't piece it back in, like, you know, glue it back in. But we still kept moving forward. 2021 started getting better lost a lot of weight 2021 and i'm just kind of on and off keeping it keeping the 40 pounds off and i felt like i was starting to do better 
in 2021. And so now we get to 2023. So the year started with my bishop, my church, like he always says like a word that he like uses for like the year, like to guide our thinking, guide the teachings and, you know, just kind of focus the church around this word. And the, the word or the theme for 2023 was awaken, right? Like, like awaken to like your potential, awaken to faith, awaken to, you know, the things that God has for you. Excuse me, I'm hungry. Um, he, like, I, I'm not like someone that's always looking for a prophecy. You know, what's, what's God going to tell me today? Read my palm, Jesus, or read my palm. Like, I'm not that type of Christian. Um, God, that tea is so good. And so, I remember on January 1st, we had our, I don't know if it was January 1st, but the first Sunday of the year. I was leading worship on the team and um, Bishop comes up and I'm going to insert the clip and he starts speaking and he's saying, you know, I feel like God is going to uh, like awaken certain dreams in, in people. And I can't remember exactly what it was, but I do remember that he like legit turned around and started speaking directly to me. And I'm like, like Bishop never like speaks directly to me like on the stage like that and um you know my bishop he's like a really like put together learned kind of scholar type of man you know he's not like yeah <laughs> he's not that kind of like like evangelist preacher dude which is one of the reasons why i like my church because it's not crazy <laughs> and so he just turns around and he just starts speaking into me like like God is gonna awaken things in you and like something about like your dreams coming through. I mean, just I'll insert the clip. Hallelujah. We love you, God. Te amamos, oh Dios. We love you so much. Te amamos tanto. And I don't know if you feel the no honor sé que tú puedes sentir that honor it is, que es to be able to start the year off poder empezar el año in God's house. En el, la casa de Dios. If you weren't here last si night, no acá noche, get ready. Prepárate. Get your journals ready. Prepara tus libros. Get your YouTube playlists ready. Prepara todo en Because the word web. that Bishop is going to be sharing Porque this la year. Que el va a estar en este año. It's a word to awaken us. Es una para que nos We're going to wake up this year. Vamos a There's so many amazing things. Hay cosas that Bishop is going to be sharing el with us. A con that the ministers of this house are going que to be imparting van a estar impartiéndonos. So if you've been asleep, Por tanto, si usted ha estado dormido, it is time to wake up. Es tiempo de despertar. Time to wake up. Tiempo de despertar. And Elder Joe, give me some space in the back because well, people are going to come this way. Now listen to me. Escúcheme. There are those of you, God's giving you a dream. Hay aquellos de ustedes que Dios le ha dado un sueño. And, and, and the enemy's tried to kill that dream. Y el enemigo ha intentado matar ese sueño. Uh, Helen, where are you, Helen? Helen, worry, you know, come, come up to the stage, come with the worship team, because when, when, when she was sharing with so much excitement, cuando ella compartía con tanto, con tanto entusiasmo, about the word that was coming today, acerca de la palabra que iba a salir en este día, the, the Lord spoke to my heart. El Señor habló a mi corazón. Team, where are you? Come, come out, guys, come on. You guys can move this once they come up. Listen. And the Lord spoke to my heart, Helen. Y el Señor habló a mi corazón, Helen. And, and I don't know if it's one dream, multiple dreams, but there's stuff God put inside of you that the enemies tried to kill. And the Lord would say to you, this is a year where God's going to wake up. He's going to arise. If things God's going to bring right back to you. No sé si He's going to bring sueño, right back to sueños. you. Hay cosas, hay sueños que el Señor ha puesto dentro de ti. El enemigo ha tratado de, de matar. Just Dios trust se God. Lo da. You're going to see him move. Lo vas a ver, You're going to see some supernatural vas things a ver happening. Cosas And that's why there was so much excitement in Por eso your spirit. Había tanto ex o emoción, because, en tu because there's some seeds inside Porque of you. De ti. And, and the Lord would say to you, el Señor te dice, the harvest is coming. La cosecha llega. The harvest is coming. La cosecha llega. He shares that word over me and I'm just like, God, what are you going to do in this year? Like, I don't know, but... I'm here for it. I'm here for it. So, so January, 
started off like I was like, okay, like I feel like I'm going to be able to, you know, start waking up from this slumber that I feel like I've been in. I'm going to start shedding off these extra pounds that I put on after losing my 40 pounds. Um, I'm going to really just like, you know, dig into my job and do the best that I can. I'm going to dig into my family life. I'm going to dig into my spiritual life and just be in that state of expectancy of what God is going to do. And so January started well. And when it comes to food, I get real nervous. <laughs> like when I go to parties, because I have a really, really bad habit of eating the wrong things and eating too much of the wrong things. And I was like, man, I'm going to gain all this weight back. I don't want to do that. <laughs> but went to a family function that we always have. It's like a New Year's Day family brunch slash uh, birthday celebration for a family member and I was like okay don't eat everything control control you can do this you know like mind over matter so I went to the brunch and I ate and I kind of controlled myself but I walked out like okay I ate a little bit too much but it was healthy stuff because the person that hosted the brunch knew that I was, you know, trying to keep my weight off. So it was good. So January, we got through it. I'm feeling good about myself. I'm feeling in control. February, again, feeling, feeling good. Like, okay, I am doing this. I am keeping the weight off. I am going to church. I am you know, trying to be a better mom. I did a parade with my daughter. <laughs> well, that's actually in March, but you know, I got the notification for the parade in February and I agreed to it in February. So we're doing good and I'm feeling good. And then March comes in again, still feeling like, okay, the year's going well. I'm, I'm okay. Life is okay. Like I said, did the parade with my daughter and just backtracking um, in February, I was like, I am so tired of living for what people say, you know, like, oh my God, what if I do this? What are they going to say? I was like, screw it. So in February, I got my nose ring right there. And I also got a tattoo right here that I am going to be adding to. So don't get alarmed, but I am going to be hopefully building a sleeve. I said it, okay? So I did that. Felt very liberating to do that because you grow up your whole life like, no, tu no puedo hacer eso, no, que tu hija es pastor, yo no, que no puedo hacer esto, que... Déjeme quieta, por favor. So, March was good. Con when controlling my eating, feeling good about myself. And then April hit. What the hell was in the air in April? I don't know, just this, like strong wave of depression kicked in in April and I cannot for the life of me remember what happened in April all I know is that I fell back really 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 hard on bad eating and I was frequenting fast food joints not just once not just twice sometimes three times a day morning noon and night just eating in my car, eating crap, eating Burger King, Wendy's, Dunkin' Donuts, McDonald's, pizza, just eating crap and just feeling so horrible about myself. And I'm like, ugh. And again, I couldn't pinpoint, and I still can't pinpoint what was going on in my life in April that made me fall off the wagon so hard. But then, toward the end of April, I'm like, no, don't give in. Push through, push through. Get out of this depression. You can do it. You can do it. So I got better. May, I started feeling better about myself again. And it's crazy. Like the moment you cut um, processed foods out, sugars and all that crazy stuff, like your body tends to. And so, you know, I've, I've just been seeing, I've been inserting pictures and videos and stuff of each month as we're going by. In May, I started feeling better about myself. I started feeling like I was in control again. Myself. I can't control anything else. I can only control myself. So, I made a decision in May 
I was like, you know, I'm gonna take up some time off of um, taking therapy sessions. That's because number one, they're expensive. And number two, it was just, therapy is great, but sometimes like when you're digging up so much from the past, it's like, it's daunting and emotionally exhausting. And I needed a break. I took a break in May from therapy and you know things were also like things were doing well in my marriage which was also good you know we had our fights here and there but things were much better than they were before and then um I don't know I just felt excited about going into the end of the school year and the summer months because I was like I'm feeling like I'm gonna be okay like 2023 is a good year things are going well and I kept thinking about that word that bishop said to me at the beginning of the year then not realizing it but um oh my like, crap I'm gaining weight again what's happening like I'm trying my best like I'm trying not to eat too much fast food if I do go to fast food I'm ordering half of what I would normally order I'm trying to walk just I just felt so fat and I took pictures of myself like, no, no, th this will be my day one. We just, we just gotta get it done. And mind you, this is middle of May, but I can't like, I'm not understanding why I'm gaining so much weight, why I feel so bloated. However, now we're in June and I threw a party for my son, my cute little boy. And we did it at the park, mind you, it was June, it was like freezing. We still had the party anyway. <laughs> the kids still got wet anyway at the sprinklers, it was crazy. But um, had the party and I was like, you know, I wanna look cute, blah, 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 blah. None of my clothes were fitting. I legit went to the thrift store, got myself a new pair of pants, size 16. Mind you, I wear like a size 8, 10 when I'm, you know, in line. 16 what the hell man whatever i looked cute at the party and i'm just like feeling so exhausted feeling so tired my body hurts so much and i'm attributing all of this to number one i'm a high school choir director so the end of the school year for those of you that are high school music teachers is crazy because you got awards banquets and you got this and you got that you got graduation so i'm attributing the stress to that attributing the stress and the physical <sighs> exhaustion and the weight gain to planning my son's birthday party literally like dragging a wagon full of a full cooler cake chips candies and whatnot for this party like dragging it from where i parked my car all the way to the party spot whatever so after my son's party i went home knocked the hell out I woke up the next day, Sunday, came home from church, knocked the hell out. Like I felt like a truck hit me. And then Monday at work, which was actually my son's birthday, June 5th. We threw the party on June 3rd. My birthday was the 5th. And I was like, you know, I, I feel crappy. I think I'm going to the pharmacy at lunch just to see, just to see. So I went to the pharmacy right by my job. Got a pregnancy test. I'm not gonna be pregnant. I'm like perimenopausal. Then I go and get the test. Go back to my room. I have my own bathroom in my room. So we went in there. We peed on the stick. And I kid you not, immediately, immediately, two blue lines. I didn't have to wait. Three minutes, seven minutes. I didn't have to wait for nothing. I was pregnant. Pregnant, pregnant, pregnant. And I was like, no. Immediately I call my husband. And I'm like, I'm pregnant. And he's like, stop kidding around. I was like, I'm not kidding. I'm pregnant. And I sent him the picture. And he's excited, and I'm just like, what the hell? Okay, really in my mind, I'm saying WTF. If you know what WTF means, that's what I was saying in my brain. Jesus had to forgive me on that one. 
And then now I'm like, oh my God, what the hell? I called my sister because I had to let this information out. So I was like, yo, don't tell anybody, but I just took a test, I'm pregnant. And my sister's like, oh my God. I'm like, my sister can't keep a secret. She's hilarious. So she was freaking out. And I'm thinking to myself, that explains why I've been gaining weight. It explains why I'm so tired. It explains a lot. And I'm just in utter shock and disbelief that at the time, I was 44, I was gonna turn 45 in like three weeks, that I was pregnant. So June started off on a weird note for me. Uh, a note of disbelief, anger, not gonna lie. And with me, I pop real quick. So literally by the time we hit July, like I just, I couldn't hide the belly. It was getting to be so tough to hide it. And I was like, crap, I gotta start telling people. Oh my God, this is so embarrassing. I don't want another child. I, I was done. So apparently I had been pregnant since May and didn't realize it. Like not like the end of May, like, like, all of me so by the time i found out i was pregnant i was almost two months pregnant almost like seven weeks pregnant like six seven weeks pregnant embarking on eight when i went to my first um ultrasound appointment we accepted it i became very depressed june july august you know at this point i'm eating crap who cares? I'm pregnant, right? I'm starting to get bigger and uncomfortable. Being pregnant in the summer sucks. September, I'm at school. At this point, there is there is no hiding the belly. And so the first day of school, I go, you know, for my teacher's convocation. And I had to mentally and emotionally prepare myself because I knew I was going to get the from people. Because in June, even though I was getting bigger, I was hiding it. I was, you know, wearing black, wearing loose clothing. So you really couldn't tell unless, like, I told you. And I told I told my boss early on. And I was like, listen, just letting you know, next year's going to be kind of like a half year for me. She was like, what do you mean? I'm pregnant. You know, so she's like, oh, my God, I'm so happy for you. And I'm like, oh, thank you. <laughs> so I did tell my boss um, early on and, you know, and the, the head secretary at the time in the office. So they would be aware but that was it and so first day of school and i was like let me go cute let me go cute let me prepare myself and i started getting all the oh my god i didn't know uh, whatever september we got through it october we're trying to just push through november december which is where we're at we're at now we're pushing through. And something I did forgot to mention is that in August, which was a much needed win for me, I got a notification that my student loans were forgiven. So I was like, what? So, so that was a win that I needed because in August I was feeling so self-conscious, so angry. I was resenting um, my husband for getting me pregnant just very angry very very angry and even like fast forward to now to december there are still moments where i am in disbelief i'm literally like i would say 17 i'm like 18 days away from giving birth filming this video I'm about 18 days away from giving birth and there is still a part of me that's like i'm having a baby so it is what it is but all in all when i think back did, did my dreams come true did that prophecy that bishop spoke over my life did it come through i don't know i guess it did in some areas i have always been dreaming about not having a student loan payment and literally in this year my husband and i both got rid of our student loans so that was over two hundred thousand dollars of debt gone so in that sense yes my dreams came true 
with regard to my family. We're not the greatest family unit, but I do feel like we are closer, doing, trying to be a better mom, better wife, always room to grow. But I don't know, I can't sit here and say, oh my God, having this pregnancy is such a dream come true. My God, God, he spoke in my life and here I am like pregnant. Oh, hallelujah. Like, that was not my prayer at all. So, I don't know. What is 2024 going to bring for me? I absolutely don't know. I am not living my life like, well, this is going to happen. I'm going to manifest this into my life. I'm going to manifest. I'm not going to live my life like that because I'm going to let the Holy Spirit manifest himself in my life and do whatever he wants to do in my life and, and just trust the process. Uh, what will this child bring to the table? I'm hoping a lot of joy. I'm hoping a lot of laughter. I don't know. I really don't know. We'll see. All in all, 2023 really was a good year. And I'm grateful to God for it. And I'm grateful that I'm still alive. I want to stay alive for a long time. And we'll see. 2024, I'm, I'm excited to meet you <laughs> in a couple of days. And I'm excited to just keep trying my best. So with that said, Happy New Year to all of you. Thank you for hanging out with me on my channel. This was a long vlog. I was not expecting it to be so long. I'm so sorry. But I, I wish you the best. I wish you joy, happiness, deep-rooted joy and happiness. I wish you the best. I wish that and pray over your life that that the desires of your heart would be fulfilled according to God's plan for you. And to everyone that's watching, if there are haters in your life, just hit the mute button. <laughs> like literally, that's another thing that I learned in 2023. I was blocking and muting and cutting people off left and right. I was like, you are not <laughs> welcome in my circle. And, and it felt good <laughs> to do that. So if you have to do that in 2024, do it. I love you guys. See you next time. Thank mm -hmm. you.